All right. All right. Welcome, everyone. My name is Tony Carcamo, president of the DFW BIM Infrastructure User Group and also president of Civil Cal Learning Solutions. And welcome for another session of Revit Q&A. So let's uh, we have a couple of great uh, industry experts with us. So, uh, Matt, if you want to lead off and then we'll go with uh, Donia Newman and Christina, uh, kind of introduce yourself, what you do, um, how long you've been in the industry uh, and what you do at the office. You know, so go ahead. Sure. Hey, everybody. My name is Matt Whetstone. Uh, I'm the senior BIM leader at HKS. Uh, I've been in the AEC industry for um, about 10 years now, and about seven of those focus solely on practice technology. So at HKS, I focus on BIM implementation standards and uh, getting those into the hands of all of our staff. So happy to be here. Okay, I was going to go next. Yes, uh, Donya Tabor Hansen. I've been in the industry forever um, since AutoCAD 1.2. Great kindergarten teacher I had, had had it in there. Yeah, that's we'll go with that. Um, I've been at my new job. This is my seventh week at at Nelson Worldwide. I'm a senior BIM CAD analyst. Um, previously, I worked in food service industry, architecture. I worked for a reseller. I customized Revit. Um, I set up templates and stuff for architects, and engineers, and yeah, about all things Revit. Yeah. <laughs> you mind if y'all want to go? You're muted. Hey, hi. My name is Luman Maestrovala, or um, Online, I go by Dr. Rabbit or Bimologist. I've uh, been in the industry for about 23 plus years. Uh, so, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I like to tinker with uh, any software to make it do things uh, that it's not supposed to, or, <laughs> or try to, you know, figure out a way to do something <laughs> with it <laughs> that it doesn't do. Rina, you want to go? Sure. My name is Rina Sahai. I am architectural BIM manager at Fishbeck in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Um, in in my work capacity, I manage and control and enhance and improve the libraries, set up templates, um, mentor my teammates troubleshoot for them and fun fact whenever i go on vacation i come back to find at least one dead project that has to be revived and um uh, uh like no man I, I i i just i i like to make revit do stuff that it's not supposed to do i like to make revit um i like to beat revit up and make it cry and uh, that's that's how that's how i get my jollies glad to be here Awesome. Christina? I don't know how to follow that. Um, <laughs> uh, so I've been in the industry about 20 plus years as well. Uh, my last job for 18 years was with a content aggregate. So that means I worked with product manufacturers implementing various BIM solutions from AutoCAD, SketchUp, Revit, uh, technical resources and three-part specifications. But I specialized in parametric dynamic uh, modeling and integrated systems. So I actually helped my company uh, acquire a couple patents related to automated design for Revit, AutoCAD, SketchUp, and three-part specifications. Um, so my focus has really been on product development and project integration, building interface with those components and workflow optimization. So um, I'm kind of continuing that on my own and in a new company that I'm getting to shortly. Well, cool, cool, cool. Um, in, is any of you going to uh, AU? Is it next week or something? <laughs> but, uh, yes. A few of y'all? Or all of y'all? Oh, we did. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then um, any yeah, of y'all teaching at AU? Yep. Yeah. yeah, me and Rena are partnering up uh, mm -hmm. to teach. Yeah. Uh, the class uh, we're doing is the return of the superb guide to Revit. Uh, yeah. Last year it was the yeah. the top uh, one of the top classes, uh, top rated classes, the top class. and uh, so, and then this year uh, also I'm uh, doing another one is 
uh, with Rina's um, unleash your uh, BIM data uh, with Revit and Power Automate. So mm -hmm. you can no, access. That, that's going to be an eye opener. Um, yeah. So that's uh, it's still a preview technology, but uh, I've invested it, a lot of time really getting it to work uh, with the product team, uh, yeah. and they have made. Uh, quite a few changes because I keep nagging them like, like, oh, this is not working. This is not working. So they were kind <laughs> enough to update the help pages con constantly. So that's good. Cool, cool, cool. Um, so at your companies, do y'all use a lot of third-party applications or you build apps in-house? Um, in, 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 in my company, we... Uh, we do not develop apps in house, but we do have a, a process of you know looking out for and um, testing and then demonstrating deploying apps to bring them in. So it's a slow but sure process. Okay, let me read mine. Um, CTC software, Revit Express tools, Data Smith, Lumion, PyRevit, V-Ray. And then there's one that just says Nelson, which is where I work. So does that cover a lot? <laughs> well, what you know, whatever it takes to be efficient. You know, I always tell the guys on the civil side, I'm not focused on just Autodesk. I'll use Bentley products, third-party companies, anything to cut down, reduce design. You know, I'm not catered to just one company. You know, so whatever can help me, you know, get the job done 50 percent or 30 or 15 percent faster. I'm going to use it, you know, as long as go. it's still affordable too. You know, I'm not going to buy a $5,000 software, you know, and ask the company to go buy 20 licenses of those. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but uh, yeah, that's all, that's quite a bit, you know, so, but that's good. <laughs> but it's good if they're, if, if everyone's using it, you know, so. Um, I think there's a lot of them using because we're getting requests for information on some, and I've got to learn half of those. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I've, I've not touched PyRevit or V-Ray or Lumion or Datasmith. Mm -hmm. The CTC stuff, no problem. I've been using that for years at mm -hmm. my former job. But I've, I've only been here seven weeks. So it's it's still kind of new to me. And, and I'm like, we got all kinds of tools. But yeah, my, my specialty is uh, families, mm -hmm. uh, family counseling. And I um, also call what else I do is uh, Revit Forensics. Yeah. Yeah, uh, this, we're on the CSI team, right at CSI. Yeah, a little uh, music when y'all do y'all's little meeting. <laughs> we actually, they did a video just the week I got here. Yeah. And I had, to, they sent me a green screen and stuff to do a video and sent to them. And they put together an introduction of our team because it's been growing for the past few months. Yeah. And they had this, they had it set up for Revit CSI. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Because I've often said for years, that's what I do. I have to go in and figure out what what's wrong and fix it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they had the CSI music playing as the background of that. So when I told my when I was interviewing with my boss and uh, his boss, um, I said, "Yeah, Revit Forensics mm -hmm. or CSI," and they started laughing. I'm like, "Well, what button did I just push?" You know? <laughs> but we've got that's Great our one. theme. Yeah. <laughs> if you haven't been inspired, you haven't you will love it. I was going to say the same thing. That, yes. that is a crazy useful oh. software, and it's free. You call oh, it it's the most amazing thing. Pirate Revit? What are you calling Pi it? Pirevit. 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 Oh, okay. Pirevit. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> oh, we don't want to say those words here, okay? <laughs> <laughs> no, I know what you're saying. But uh, yeah, I mean, Pirevit, uh, this time actually I was uh, showing Rena about, uh, she's a, well, she was wanting to marry or what? Pie rabbit, rather not the, <laughs> the author. Okay, uh, I'm a, <laughs> I'm not, uh, you know. So, but no, just uh, what I was showing her about the extensions. Oh. People have written open source yeah. extensions that, uh, and best of all, it's free. Mm -hmm. And um, I know I've uh, introduced it to you know in our company a few people in the past as well. But the the you know, some of the users have been using it in the past as well. I know Guyane, she's from my office. She uses it a lot as, um, I mean, I, you know, it reduces the amount of time that I need to do some of the tasks, but I'm a big fan of uh, free tools uh, because of free sure, tools. small <laughs> budgets or, I mean, ID8 was, I've used ID8 at uh, Walt Disney Imagineering and uh, at uh, my last job at Jerdy, but uh, now with uh, JGM, 
yeah it's a smaller budget right now so uh, you do buy with free tools and the best <laughs> one is pyrevit and the new up yes. and coming and everything now is uh di, di roots, di roots. Yes. Uh, one oh, is, man. one is yes. um and they are i mean like uh similar to what id8 bim um uh, uh, uh what's i forgot um uh, Bim link, Bim link, uh, ID8, uh, sticky, yeah. and a few other things. It does uh, those and lot, lots, lots more. Yeah. Um, I'll show you in a minute uh, once I have my rabbit up and running. And uh, yeah, a, a really different. cool thing about PyRevit is that if you know Python, you can write your own apps. You can yeah. write your own apps. You can oh, write wow. your own toolbar buttons. You can customize it. Make it do whatever you want. Uh, recently, I was in Ireland for the Bill Coordinator Summit, and uh, there was this gentleman and uh, one uh, who was conducting a training lab on uh, on creating custom toolbars and tools. Mm -hmm. I read it; it was fascinating. Yes, it's amazing what you can do with that tool. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think uh, your uh, your your original question was: Are you purchasing off the shelf products? Are you developing in house? And I yeah. think that's that's a really great point. You know, mm -hmm. at, at least at HKS, we're seeing kind of a mix of both, depending mm -hmm. on the skill set of those that are interested in developing the functionality. And um, Tarina and Iman's point, if those folks have um, that skill set in Python, that definitely lowers the barrier to entry for them to get yes. that functionality <clears throat> into other people's hands. Yes. They don't have to, you know, stack it up in, in C Sharp. They can just, you know, get it out the door. Yeah. Um, but I would say we typically try to lean on off the shelf products just to lower that overhead for year over year uh, maintenance on, mm -hmm. on those items. But there are certain things where it's just specific to our organization mm -hmm. and, and we really need to, to get granular about it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah. I so, mean, you can't uh, discount uh, Dynamo too because a lot of people are using that uh, mm -hmm. uh, too, and uh, some of it is very yeah, easy. Yeah, that that was going to be my next question. Like, okay, yeah. what, what percent of y'all's time are y'all spending creating, you know, custom things in Dynamo? Oh. Very small. Yes, level. should be yes. more, but yes, <laughs> not enough. <laughs> I mean, it's always, always to me, one. like they say it, it's it, it's so easy to do. Like, well, yep. it's yep. not as simple as you say it is, you know. Um, you know, and again, uh, Python is the key, uh, key too. I mean, if you know Python, there is a, um, a lot you can uh, get out of it uh, further. Uh, but there are also, uh, you know, what they call it packages that uh, give you this, uh, you know, um, what's called uh, the commands and tools that, you know, takes a lot of time yeah. to program. And then to the point of Matt is, yes, it, it becomes an extreme overhead if you know, if everybody tries to uh, develop tools uh, within the office, even with Dynamo, oh. <laughs> unless you are really good at it. Yeah. And the path um, processing, yeah. Yeah. So that's the one thing that uh, you, you have to think of is how much time y yeah. it takes and uh, the training required. But uh, the other thing is, is that with, uh, as uh, you know, some, some companies, the BIM managers, and they have some extra um, overhead time where they can develop the Dynamo scripts yeah. um, and r run those uh, you through the, you know, and distribute it to the team. But yeah, there is a, a time involved to update them as things uh, progress every year. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that. I mean, one of the example was to project setup is one of the best example is, is basically you have mul multiple buildings on a park uh, and um, you want to set up files for it with, you know, 10 disciplines associated with it and link each other of them together. So a Dynamo script that, uh, you know, is very, very fast uh, and helpful and then you can customize it to your mm -hmm. needs. Uh, rather than writing a plugin or something. I, mean, I actually took my first Python training, like self-training last weekend. I started watching, a, I follow a, a guy on YouTube. You know, I took a class one time in college, but I really didn't pay attention. I didn't, I'm like, oh, this is easy. And I didn't even try to study or anything. And then, then I fell <laughs> behind. And then I, I was like, you know what? I'm going to fail. I'm going to drop this class <laughs> because I, I had some basics from high school. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah. Um, 
But yeah, in the civil side, I would say Dynamo, you know, very, very, maybe 1%. Those big giant companies like the Jacobs, Jacobs K, um, AECOM that have a, you know, programming department or they're probably the only ones to me that are really taking advantage of Dynamo, um, you know, but it doesn't have the tools that the Revit side has, you know, you know y'all are the more robust version of Dynamo versus our civil, which is very limited to what you could do. Uh, so some people, most people are still using, um, you know, old scripts um, um, and then buying third-party apps. Like my company, we have our own part third-party apps. So I build apps because I'm still designing for engineering companies. So I'll look at stuff that's taking me too long. You know what? I'm going to build an app and share it with, the, you know, with everybody. You know, this is mm-hmm. taking way too long, you know. So, uh, but I try to focus on things that that's not going to save me a couple clicks or, or a minute. I try to focus things that are taking me hours and then I'll build an app and it'll take a couple of months Sorry. or so to build it. Um, but uh, no, no, it's great, uh, great stuff. Um, so you've got, you know, Dynamo, you got in-house programming, you got third-party apps. Um, are there other programs that are competitive to Revit out there that y'all use that's kind of similar to Revit for design? You know, uh, like on Civil, we have the Bentley. You know, we have uh, yeah. Civil Site. There's other ones that compete with Civil 3D. But are there other programs that do uh, architectural design that y'all use outside of Autodesk products? I would say that SketchUp is a big one. Yes. That yeah. is yeah. Such the, uh, yeah. There's some of that used here. Some of that, right. And they're advancing that system actually quite extensively last year and are actually looking for a huger push this year because mm-hmm. they're trying to actually be competitive to the Revit yeah. in their own little world. Uh, so they, with their new online system as well. I know, I know. You have you know. to get the air quotes. You can never compete, but they yeah. are working very hard. There has been some huge improvements and strides. Yeah. And the major one was actually uh, file size and management, mm-hmm. which Revit is a victim of as well. But yeah. uh, you could just put a tree in SketchUp and crash the system. <laughs> so you couldn't really get, oh my gosh, it was, mm. uh, but yeah, so they've really changed it up that it's a lot more stable. So so have y'all looked, you know, I'm, I'm always trying to play with third-party applications to, uh, there's a brand new company came out like um, two or three years ago called Majimate architectural um go check it out it's called modulate and it's kind of so user-friendly it reminds me of infoworks and sketchup and it's an architectural product uh, product and i've been showing it to our user group but if you want to play with something go try out modulate so m-u-d-u-m-a-t-e and it's like i don't think it's like 30 or 40 bucks a month or something for this product but it's pretty amazing i'm playing around with it i'm not even an architect i'm like this is pretty user-friendly um pretty cool and you can bring in CAD files and stuff like that, but go definitely check it out. You know, mod you yeah. Now, and I know Chief Architect is still very big as yeah. well. That might still be, at least in the consensus, might still be the number yeah. one. I don't know about the U.S. Uh, so, well, they, they're letting it. They, they teach Chief Architect at schools because, frankly, they can't at the high school level. They can't get the teachers trained in Revit to teach them that, although it's available for them. Yeah, for uh, free. Great. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me let me ask you this. So um, another product that I'm training myself right now a little bit is TestFit. So I, I deal with a lot of developers and I've been playing with TestFit because I do a lot of concept, multi-family concept plans and I see the benefits of TestFit. I don't about the parking thing. It's more for cookie cutter parking lots, not advanced parking lots to me. Uh, but when you can easily just plug in the ratio of single uh, bedroom, two bedrooms, number of floors, and then look at your parking, analyze it, does it work? I think that saves so much time. Now, it is $5,000 per year for that product, but it's pretty amazing. I don't know if you have ever looked into it on the architectural side because there's an architectural version and there's a developer version. Um, so I'm going to try to go, you know, tap into that uh, software and use it more by myself. Um and uh, but have, have y'all ever looked at it? It's called oh. TestFoot. You know, they just no, got I like twenty million dollars in funding. You know, they're here in oh. Dallas. Uh, they'll be yeah. at AU. Go check out their booth. They will be at AU. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah. This is probably might be their first year. Oh, uh, but they're oh. pretty new. Um, yeah, I don't know if I've heard of them specifically, but the oh, tool you're describing, amazing. I saw a video that demonstrated exactly that. So I'm going to assume yeah. that was the company. Go, it was go, amazing. Yeah, go go yeah. check it out because if you if you do site planning and stuff, it's going to be great for laying it out. If you deal, if you ever deal with a developer side, 
go go look at the developer version and stuff like that. So especially great for multifamily. I so uh, um, it could, you know, all you really need is one license for your company without one guy that's sitting there trying to analyze it. It's most likely a planner, site planner. Mm -hmm. And that person is cranking out the numbers based on parking ratio, your zoning requirements for that building. And then you can, you know, work one-on-one -on -one with your developer and stuff. So I see great benefits with that product. Um, They've got a free... 1.0 free beta out there mm -hmm. right now. Okay. Yeah, they're greatly expanding. Oh, okay. you know, they, uh, it was like 15, 20 million dollar funding. They just increased got oh. funding, oh. so to go to the next level. Um, so uh, it's not a Revit so design product. I don't know Tony? if you can bring in Revit or not into the product. It just creates like just little boxes and tells you the square footage and you know and the sizes and stuff like that. So, but it comes out with spreadsheets and you you know uh, I think you can push out a CAD file. But it's pretty cool. So I just uh, threw a link in the chat. Um, I know they have a, a Dynamo package, so <laughs> you can take what you uh, work up in test fit and and bring some of that information to you know utilize value in yeah. in Revit. Uh, but yeah, I, I echo all your sentiments, Tony. If you're doing multifamily, um, it's it's a super powerful tool. And I know they're looking into uh, hospitality and and other building typologies, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, for multifamily, it it's really powerful. Yeah, so, so I highly encourage you to all your architectural clients. What's that? Oh, oh uh, no, I was just saying that the competitor to it is uh, Autodesk acquire acquisition from Norway. Mm -hmm. It's called Space Maker. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't know if it is included in the AEC collection or not, but uh, okay. it's still in kind of a, a beta, I mean, beta in the US because uh, a lot of their uh data uh, back end is uh european yep. uh market especially mm -hmm. norway but it's pretty cool i mean like you can just go on a map and it will uh, specify the area where your site is and it will mm -hmm. just do a 3d map of, i mean like you know site and everything and um, build up the roads for you build up uh the uh, context as well Oh, wow. it, also, it also performs, you know, the sun and wind and traffic and noise analysis. It's it's yeah. very cool. That's cool. That's that's really good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, does it, you know, um, do like open space? You know, gives you a little ratio of what your open space requirements is and stuff like that based on the building. The building, you know, for when you put a development down, you have to meet the zoning requirements, and the zoning requirements might tell you, hey. Your open space requirement is 10% of the property or 20% or 50%. And then you're looking at that. And then you might break it down to like, you know, landscape requirements. But I don't know if it does that. Uh, I think TestFit does that. It actually tells you what your open space requirements is um, um, uh, on there. So, but uh, no, that's pretty cool. It's kind of the little bit same as the TestFit. I haven't played with that one yet or, or, or haven't seen that. I've, I've heard of it, but I never really looked into what it does. Um, I think SpaceMaker was... It was talked about for the first time in uh, AU 2020. Mm -hmm. They had a they had a virtual session and they were, they introduced uh, it, they introduced it to us. Okay, yeah, it was pretty eye catching. What other products y'all currently using in house? You know, you don't have to share. Some people don't like share what they use, <laughs> so to keep them competitive uh, against your own competitors and stuff like that. So sharing yeah. secrets, but. <laughs> Um, this one might actually be good for a few of you, um, especially if you're checking models by other people. Yeah, uh, I use a few tools by Bird Tools. Uh, mm -hmm. They have an alignment tool for notes that just aligns all the notes, all the error, arrows. Yeah. You just drag it and it clicks it. And I really like them because he's actually my programmer on an app I'm building for Revit. Yeah. So I might be biased. <laughs> but I love him. <laughs> uh, so I, I'm very excited to always promote his stuff. They're just simple actions that, yeah. you know, you get a model from somebody and you're like, oh my gosh, do you not know how to line up text? It's, exactly. I mean, Revit yeah. gives you a little thing that when you drag I it know, over, it lines it for you. Um, but his tool, and it allows you to pick your location. You can change yeah. all their orientation. I love it. It's such a simple tool. Hi, Revit. We can always give that one a shout out. And, and uh, a heads up if no one knows this, but you can create custom hash patterns in PyRevit. Yes. And that is one of my favorite things about it. There's so many other things. But that's, my, just, that, that's, that's how I earn my living, you know? <laughs> I, I, I get thrown out in favor of PyRevit. 
<laughs> yeah, like at yeah, least, at least 2,500 patterns out of that system. And you can export them to use in other versions. Yeah. And uh, uh-huh. there's a program called Hatch Kit that's outside that I use to convert to like 16 other types of systems. So like Chief Architecture, just the one off the top of my head, but yeah. AutoCAD, uh, just utilizing many things really mm-hmm. kind of gives us a robust workflow. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about, uh, uh, you may not be involved with the design, but um, the process when you're doing a project I see some companies will do some, you know, hand drafting. Then you've got a site planner that's doing the hand drafting and they'll take it into CAD and then they'll take it into Revit. Is that what your current company does, you know, when you're doing laying out a property or you're going straight to Revit and let's get something out, you know, and, and get it going? You know, what is y'all currently doing in y'all's company? Um, you know, some companies on the engineering side, that's what they do. They'll sketch something and draw with pencils and then they'll throw it in the CAD and then, you know, once it gets approved, then it gets into civil 3D version and stuff. So, and more in-depth design. But uh, uh, do y'all go straight to Revit when you're doing, you know, conceptual site planning? Or no, you're, no. are you doing SketchUp um, first, then going to Revit? You know, what's how kind of a general workflow? That, that's pretty much where we are. The designers start with, uh, with SketchUp. But again, it depends upon the project and depends upon... Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, upon the owners, for instance, when we've got retail, for instance, yeah. and uh, where, where where it is, you know, you've got this really, really set set, set uh, group of requirements from the owner, then a lot of times what we get is we just get a, a 2D AutoCAD file. Yeah. And we use that as a base and uh, in, in order to generate, generate our designs. Okay. Um, do y'all get involved with any of your uh, design teams? You know, you ever go into like kickoff meetings and stuff like that? That that, that is a part of what 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 I do. I mean, being mm-hmm. involved in the design per se, no. I mean, that's yeah. totally designer's baby. But yes, uh, I am involved in the in the kickoff meetings, setting up the graphic standards, for instance, mm-hmm. setting up milestones. You know, um, making sure that the that the team is on task and yeah. meeting meeting the deadlines, all of that fun stuff, you know, even even little things. Uh, uh, for instance, what kind of a view title are we going to use? Mm-hmm. What's the direction of Project North? You'd yeah. be amazed at how these little points get to be overlooked yeah. by, by the architects on the team. And you know what? You overlook something small on the sheet and it, it's going to come back and bite you. It can yeah. become a cause of embarrassment and then you've got contract disappoint and laugh, you know, things like that. I have to bow out. Yeah, Enjoy. well, thank you for thanks, Donnie, for coming in. So yes, uh, okay. I know when I did happy work birthday. For, oh. <laughs> oh, yep. Did work for uh, you know when I was working for engineering companies as a CAD manager and slash program manager, I would you know join those kickoff meetings and I would give them advice like, hey, there's some challenges you're going to face. You know, I would recommend you to design it this way. Like use these tools, not design it this way, but use these tools to achieve your task. You know, am I going to do feature lines or am I going to do 3D modeling with corridors? And I'll give them some pointers. Hey, uh, do this, do this. Don't forget to take advantage of these 3D, uh, these third-party apps, you know, when you're designing this part, don't forget to use these tools, stuff like that. And I think it's really helpful for BIM and cab managers to take part of those kickoff meetings and stuff. So um, you can kind of address any kind of challenges or if, if they ask you like, oh, how would I model these two or three detention ponds? Um, so it'd be more of a streamline when we, you know, share it from the H and H hydraulic department to the civil department. So you know, stuff like that. Right. So so any issues can be predicted, and you can be proactive about them rather than you know um, being involved, being pulled into the issue when it's just snowballed and turned into a monster. <laughs> I've been there before. You get oh, thrown in the happens. middle of some yeah. hot mess and the fire, and you're like, "What? What's going on?" I have no idea. In the middle tomorrow. <laughs> I'm like, "What?" You got absolutely no idea. Uh, a story that I was that I shared with Noman some time ago because uh, because he and I were co-authors on the on the presentation at BIM Coordinators Summit, and yeah. just the day before I, the the slide deck was submitted. I added in a slide, even though we had way too much material and we were really short on time. And that was when the team did something that they're not supposed to do. They used a whole bunch of 
door families from heaven alone knows where. And those door families would not talk to the schedule. And we ended up with a schedule with a whole bunch of blank spots yeah. because mm. those families did not have the right parameters. So last minute, guess who's scrambling to fix <laughs> the door families and make that uh, schedule look right? It yeah. is, it's a nightmare. So, you know, I mean, you can yeah. try to be as proactive as you can, but when stuff snowballs, I think a, a large part of it is um, the tendency to overlook details that you really don't see yeah you know it's all there it's on the sheet and the model is done and everything looks wonderful <laughs> until you actually get into detail and you see that yeah. there's stuff missing and then suddenly people just blank out and yeah. um, and then i i get the frantic mess trail <laughs> so do you all take part in the kind of the qaqc during the design you know you know usually there's like on the engineer side, there's one person that's looking at the design. He's a senior engineer. He's doing the QAQC. But then the cabinet comes in, make sure that the drawings are all matching company standards or not deviating from that. Do y'all take part of that you know, QAQC team and y'all's uh, companies? As a matter of fact, uh, uh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. I guess, I guess I, mean, I just wanted to say about the design itself, uh, what you mentioned. Uh, last company I worked at, uh, about 90 people, but uh, the, it, I had to uh, educate them that uh, the need for the BIM uh, manager, design technology manager to be at the kickoff meetings of projects so that, you know, the build in the planning of the building is correct. Make sure that, uh, you know, the coordinates are correct. Everything fits all together. And when you have multiple buildings on a side uh, afterwards, it just gets haywire. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it, it's absolutely critical to make sure that we do get involved. But uh, yes. the other part of it, I guess, you asked is about uh, QAQC. Um, yes, QAQC along the project is absolutely critical by the team members or the project uh, BIM lead. Um, I know Matt probably has some uh, QA uh, during the project. Uh, you just do weekly or uh, and some have automatic uh, QA keys, QC systems developed that keeps an eye on the, um, you know, your Revit files. And if there are any issues uh, like that, actually, um, the, the model checker from BIM interoperability tool is pretty good. Uh, it does uh, do, but other people have done uh, other, you know, checking uh, softwares online. Uh, through Power BI, but I'm actually, that's the class I'm presenting is like, you know, you extracting data from Revit uh, directly through Power Automate and analyze it online for whatever reason you want. Um, Autodesk just starting a beta on something called uh, Autodesk Validation, uh, which basically runs on a schedule to do QAQC on your models in BIM 360s slash ACC as well. Uh, it takes the same um, configuration files. Um, so that's pretty cool uh, that I'm trying to get into the beta, but <laughs> I have to convince CAD Microsystems to let me in somehow because <laughs> they are the developer for it, even yeah. though it's an Autodesk product. Yeah. Okay. And you yeah, know, Nimana, I'm, I'm going to, uh, I, I got to try to get into that Power Automate class because that, that sounds really incredible. Um, yes. I'll, <laughs> I'll be one of the people standing outside the door, um, but we're uh, we're trying to do a, a similar sort of thing. We're uh, running the CTC project activity logger. Um, so y'all may be familiar with that particular piece, but um, it's basically scraping thousands and thousands of data points off of every Revit model, every Revit session. So anytime anybody opens anything, um, it, it hits the database. And so essentially just crafting our own HKS specific dashboards that let us monitor, you know, when are our C STC time spiking, uh, when are our save time spiking, file sizes, that sort of thing. Um, so we can start to try to get ahead of those fires before they become gigantic. Um, exactly. But yeah, uh, in terms of like quality management of the model of the document set, um, we do have quite a few folks uh, throughout uh, HKS that are involved in that, um, but primarily where I and the rest of my team are involved is helping out with the BIM execution plan on the front end, where, mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of the things that, that Rena had been talking about, you know, we, we try to bake all that stuff into the plan early on 
um, make sure at that kickoff meeting, everybody's yeah. bought in, everybody knows what are we using for design authoring software? Is it SketchUp? Is it Rhino? How do we make that transition into document authoring? At what yeah. point does it happen um, when you know, we make need to make those critical decisions? Yeah. yeah. I hear you. And what, what is really interesting is, um, I've worked at companies where they had absolutely no idea what a BIM manager does. <laughs> you know, I mean, so uh, around about five years ago, the company that I was in, I was basically in a corner. I was kept away from production. I was kept away from any meetings. Oh my, um, my job was just to give a, a monthly presentation and to do graphical Q QAQC in addition sure. to, you know, mentoring and families and things like that. So graphical QAQC was a part of what I did. He was just making sure that um, everything looked right on the sheet. Yeah. So yeah. the lesson I learned was that you cannot take a BIM manager and put them into this little cell and tell them that you are not to touch production. You just can't because that's how you know you you think and you dive deeper into the software and you experiment and you yeah. test your ideas and your concepts. You know. You yeah. have to be uh, involved in production yeah. At, yeah. in one form or the other. Yeah. As a CAD manager, I would actually get into people's other people's projects. I would open it up and, and then I'd go and address it with the team. Like, hey, I noticed this this was happening. You know, um, you, you know, in future projects, you want to, you want to, you know, let's focus on using these tools or doing it this way. Um, so I did it all the time. I would go into people's projects all the time, engineers' projects, and, and look at the, what they're doing. So um, I got and, reprimanded for that. Said I was condescending. Well, the, well, the thing like, is that you, well, you're doing I, it wrong. Where I worked, I uh, I really only answered to the COO and CEO of the owner. Mm. I didn't answer anybody. Not even the senior engineer. You know, they were they were not my upper management. I you know they were smaller companies. They're not these one thousand you know or five thousand ten thousand uh, employee for it. But I made sure that you know who I answered to was really the owner or the COO. So yeah. if I had a discussion with a senior engineer, then yeah, it's going to be <laughs> eye to eye level. <laughs> so yeah. Um, yeah. you know, so it, but most CAD managers, BIM managers don't have that power <laughs> to you know yeah. um, you know so. Um, and they're a stakeholder as well. We be. are stakeholders in yeah. a project. We should yeah. be involved, especially cross disciplines, cross yeah. uh, in, like software integration. Mm -hmm. You guys are bringing up Rhino, you're bringing up Revit, AutoCAD. Yeah. If you're integrating all those systems together, bringing somebody in from each team, like Rena, yeah. you said, just helps fill, like, work out all those problems mm -hmm. earlier on. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes it's not just a negative thing. I'll look and see what they're doing and I'll know something that's unique and I'll just bring it up to the to the team. Like, hey, I like what you did here. Let's see if we can incorporate it to the other teams. You know, it wasn't just, a, I look for positive things too. They might be doing a very unique thing in, 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 within the product or workflow and I would bring it up and, you know, ask the you know, senior engineer or the, t the project leader and say, hey, I like what you did here. Let's see if we can incorporate it on another team's process, you know? So it wasn't all just negative yeah. things, you know, that I looked at. So, uh, but yeah. you know, as, as, as a CAD manager, you know, sometimes you're the bad guy because you're you're looking at, hey, you're, you know, why did you're not using the company templates? You know, why are you deviating and stuff? So some some people don't like that, you know, especially if you go work at a company that never had a CAD manager or a BIM manager, and now oh, you're going yeah. around and, you know, telling people, hey, we have a new company standard. So that's where it gets really hectic. <laughs> so yeah. when, Or the CAD manager is just a facade. Yeah. That, one, <laughs> that really hinders <laughs> development. Yeah. That's a big one I've had to deal with in the yeah. past trying to work. But, uh, and also like uh, a lot of great points on uh, the workflow optimization with yeah. all of that, and bringing everybody together. It's really good to see that uh, yeah. you guys are spearheading that within your company. Yeah, what I, what I end up doing is sometimes, let's say if I do something different for the project or they have a unique need for a, some schedule or they want a schedule and things talk each other, blah, blah, whatever. If it goes successful, then I have the user that I was working with and, and you know troubleshooting and whatnot then I have them present the class to the uh, to the users of the mm -hmm. company because mm -hmm. it elevates them number one mm -hmm. I mean people know okay I do training but uh, and I know he's the BIM manager or CAD manager mm -hmm. whatever it is 
um, yeah, he's going to talk, talk, talk. But if some a peer for them <laughs> is presenting, it, it has a lot more meaning to it. Yeah. So that's what I have learned. Uh, and I and it has been very successful because it uh, raises their uh, capabilities and other project managers are looking out for him. I said, you know, so that uh, is a, you know, for me, it works out very well that way. And uh, like be it Enscape, be it a, a workflow for doing something within mm -hmm. Revit or CAD or interoperability between the softwares that worked, um, you know, Rhino inside Revit there was another mm -hmm. one that I, you know, uh, have them presented because they were expert with Grasshopper, they were expert with Rhino, not as much with Revit, and then we kind of worked it out the whole thing, and then you know, so that was. Uh, but they, yeah, if they hear from their peers; it's much more meaningful than just hearing it from the BIM manager. Oh, yeah, he's gonna just force us to do this or whatever. <laughs> Well, it gives them the opportunity to feel like hammer. they really can learn it too, right? You're like, oh, it's not the BIM manager; he can do everything. Yeah, you're hearing right. it from your peer. Yeah. I tried to do that and plus you don't have to create person. the slide deck. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. I, I tried to do that once with somebody that somebody did something unique and I'd say, hey, why don't you teach it? I'm like, no, I'm not in front of people and tell them what I did. They didn't want to do it. Um, they were very nervous about it. But um, how many of you are taking advantage of Inkscape? Have you ever used it? Yes, we do. Yeah. Yes. That's they they yes. added some new features, you know, in oh, Inkscape. Okay. So they're doing some great things. I played with it, dabbled with it. I was like, this is pretty nice for such a very, what is it, four hundred dollars, you know, software or something. And it's like, yeah. wow, yeah. that's just I mean, it's just a notch below depending. Lumiana Twin Notion to me. I don't think it's that you know big of a gap, you know. But yeah, and uh, when you uh, when you consider West, the efficiencies you gain with a real time renderer, yeah. um, I it just yeah. seems like a no brainer. I was thinking the other day not that long ago, how many hours I spent exporting FBX files and bringing them into 3ds max and uh, texturing uh, things uh, and lighting things. Yeah. Like what yeah. a uh, huge pain and it's just gone now. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. it's incredible. The amount yeah. of, of progress that's been made in biz. I did not even like yeah. going so I've been a user for the, oh, sorry, Kristen, Christina, you were saying, yeah. Oh, now, I was just saying first. that uh, I have been a user with uh, them for the longest time when they first came out. And I've been uh, working with, I mean, now they are a lot bigger. But uh, the, the one thing that I, the part that just Matt mentioned, there was no software that had live real-time uh, rendering tool where you can move something yes. and it represents it. Yeah. Uh, but when I brought it into one of the companies I worked at called GBBN, uh, when I first introduced it, I, I did it as a renderer, uh, you know, uh, you can do these presentation videos, blah, blah, blah. I worked with Phil Reed a lot. Uh, he's great when supporting it. So, uh, but the thing was, then I noticed that the designers were using not just for presentation, but to, for design, more so than anything, what they were looking at, oh, this matte surface, oh, this is shiny, oh, make it, you know, satin, let's see how the how it reflects light. And so they were like using it for design, not just for pretty pictures that you want to present to client, yeah. anything like that. It was just their workflow. It became a workflow for design as opposed to just being a Lumion, yes, I mean, they do that. They have a back and flow now a plugin. But the big big thing is that Enscape uses the same tools within the system. Mm -hmm. You can go beyond that, but you don't have your data is stored within your files. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. the biggest thing, and then it's all real time. So yeah, that's that's a huge thing. It, that single source of truth is the Revit model. You know that that's what we always want to maintain, and. That's a great point, you know, looking at the design from a material standpoint, let's swap out textures. But I think one of the most critical things, at least from the architectural perspective, is getting a sense of space. Mm -hmm. It's so difficult to do that when you're just looking at an orthographic projection of a Revit model. And sure, you can drop a camera, but, you know, that can get skewed as you mess yeah. with the field of view. Yeah. Especially if you throw a headset on and you jump into that Inkscape model, the oh. insights that you get about the design itself are just game changing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So yeah, I, I can't speak highly enough about Inkscape paired with a VR experience yeah. to, Love that. to actually understand your design 
and yeah. better deliver for the clients. And also, yeah. you know, Inkscape helps to report, you know, just actual details about the in, information about the elements in the model. You click on a wall, it tells you what kind of wall it is, what materials there are involved. I mean, just the fact that it displays and reports bin data. Mm -hmm. it, that is yes. really significant for me. It's such a nice combo, you know. <laughs> while you are uh, while you are presenting your model, you are you can also talk about the actual guts and um, and bones and meat that that's involved into the model. Yep. I think that's pretty yeah. significant. And a point that Tony no, no, might not way. know: you can use an Xbox controller with it. Oh, right. you do that? Oh, yep. wow! Yeah, yeah. Yep. It's yeah. too much fun. Be warned. <laughs> it's too much fun. Yeah, <laughs> and I, and I love its integration that when you have one license, because I work cross platform, I can go from Revit to SketchUp, not a problem, right? Yeah. I just I love the integration of and of Enscape. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, Tony, if you ahead. wouldn't mind, if I could pose a, a question to the group. Yeah. Uh -oh. Um, I I was talking about um that using the VR experience in a headset to get a good sense of space. And with Enscape, that's really great for consuming a design and reviewing a design. I wanted to ask the, the rest of us here how much you've engaged with actually uh, authoring a design in VR um, using uh, those, those controllers. Um, I've used a product called Iris VR, which mm -hmm. does a little bit of that, uh, still, still mostly on the review side. Um, and then this is not architectural authoring, but um, if you've used Google Tilt Brush, it's a 3D painting tool. Uh, that was one of the coolest experiences I've ever had, but you can paint in three dimensions. And so- I saw that. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's great. Uh, so do yeah, you mean you're talking um, about what was it the model Google. and you're just painting inside the model in the VR? It's a Google Tilt Brush, but yeah, you're you're kind of in this three dimensional space, and you're boxed into you know a ten foot cube or whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you you use the wands, and you can draw in three dimensions, and then you can move your head around, and you can see what you've drawn in three D. Oh. You can scale it up and scale it down. You can change the size of the brush. And so, um, at a a prior uh, company I worked for, we did a, a Halloween competition where we did you know a Halloween three dimensional art painting. Um, but you could certainly use that for yeah. architectural 3D sketching. There's no reason why you couldn't. Hmm. Um, but I'm just, I'm really intrigued by this idea of virtual reality design authoring, um, because so much of what we do, we have to use the computer eventually to get our designs into digital space. But there is that breakdown between the brain and the computer. You know, you still have to use a mouse, you still have to use a keyboard. Mm -hmm. Doing things in VR can be so much more fluid, so much more dynamic, but I'm just not sure that that we've really found the right tool to do that yet, um, specifically in the architectural space. So anyway, that was a long-winded question, um, <laughs> but I just wanted to see if, if anybody had, had done anything like that. Hmm. Well, the only thing I got, go on. Uh, well, the only experience I've had was with, um, with, with Insight VR, and uh, this was for QHUC, where, you know, uh, you've got your headsets and you're, you can walk around the dollhouse and you can walk through the dollhouse and you can mark it up and you actually have the markups in, um, I mean, they're, they're actually there. You're mm -hmm. actually writing on the walls, basically. I know a five-year-old would love that. So, so that was, that was kind of fun. And you know, when you got the headset up, it's, it's kind of amazing because it is so real. You're there, you're actually ducking or uh, uh, ducking and dodging you know things like ducts and columns and in, in Ireland they put a headset on me and put me on a train and then the train suddenly disappeared and I'm going at 300 kilometers an hour over the track not good that was not yeah, you're probably trying to register all that and you're like probably get lightheaded it's kind of like you just let me out of here that's yeah. how real it gets but it's entirely possible to you know you you can um I mean in AU 2019, Viveka Devdas and I, we did a presentation on VR and we looked at things like Inside VR and Iris VR and Reflect and um, it, it did um, it did a little bit of uh, of stuff with a headset on. It was really nice because you could go ahead and you and we were writing funny messages on the walls and the windows of of the model. It's uh, that is I think that can be really really engaging. I think that's a lot more engaging than 
taking a highlighter and a red pen and marking up a PDF printout or even, you know, marking up uh, Bluebeam, which is a vast improvement on the good old uh, paper, uh, paper-based QAQC. This can be really fascinating. Mm -hmm. What were you going to say, Christina? Uh, being in the product manufacturer industry, it's not really a big thing yet for virtual reality. One, you can't get every manufacturer to understand it. Mm. They barely understand AutoCAD, Revit, the, or the uh, word. <laughs> but we did have a few clients that would um, ask us to export um, a VR mm -hmm. uh, file for them so that they could take it to their stakeholders and show it. And I, it's not as integrated as, you know, what you guys would do walking down a street. But for some companies that had, like, uh, did some did some appliances for Samsung. So, you know, we could open and close the door. You could pull out a drawer, which is simple things like that. So the application for it, I feel is, it, it has a lot of potential, but who's going to use it? Where is it going to get applied? And, you know, the I, I feel you, Matt, on like, it's just not ready for what the architectural industry is yeah. looking for quite because we don't even know our industry yeah. hasn't changed in forever we're still stone age and then the last 15 years 20 years here we are with technology and developing tools oh, a great day to be alive i but, saw a video I on youtube where someone had a vr headset and they're walking through an apartment and they're just touching walls and changing the materials and then touching tables and this change that's materials. huge with the I'm realtors like, I said, yeah. don't do that to developer because he'll spend hours sitting there changing your model live you know, um, don't, don't definitely don't do that live with a developer because they'll be there forever. But I thought it was pretty interesting. They were just touching the wall and then a little yeah. menu pop up and you, he changed the materials and then he walking around and then they were like, I think they were switching even the furniture. They could just click a chair and then switch to a different furniture. I'm like, okay, that's pretty amazing. <laughs> it was like yeah. just swapping the materials really. Uh, so as long as that doesn't do it in real life and I'm sitting there and my couch changes. Yeah, unless yeah. it's a better couch. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but uh, I think it's going great. Do you, okay, so the last question, I don't want to keep you any longer. Um, do you see that VR is st still leading the way in technology or you think AR is now really the hot thing? Um, XR. Or XR, it's MR. XR and, you know, there's four of them. No, but, MR, and then now it's XR. Autodesk is now researching all XR into <laughs> it Yeah. now. So I forget what the definition was, I tell you the truth. I mean, are y'all doing uh, any kind of AR and MR and? Um, so just just my own perspective, um, and I know discipline to discipline, it's going to be a little different. Mm -hmm. um, like Christine, I think in the product design world, augmented reality um, has a lot of potential because it's um, for for a few different reasons. One of them being processor capacity. Um, mm -hmm. When you're thinking about the scale that you need to have your model at and then render it in AR, it's much easier to do that to say, put a product on a desk and see what it looks like and you know change colors and look at that versus a building and you're swapping out facades. You know, It really just comes down to the number of polygons that are in the model. Mm -hmm. um, so I think for that reason, and then also for the design authoring capability, uh, I just think that's a lot easier to do in VR. Um, I, you, know, you mentioned the, the touching walls and, and changing materials. I've been involved with a couple projects similar to that where we have uh, an experience and we build in some of that user interface to, you know, they can touch something, they can pick a button, it brings up a, a panel, it brings up a video or something. Mm -hmm. and, and that required a lot of custom coding in Unity and Unreal Engine. And so there's just, there's a lot of extra overhead involved in that sort of experience, whereas it seems virtual reality is um, a lot easier to access. And, and I think probably the better value for architects currently. Yeah, there, there's actually a programmer just two doors down from me. He's a big type programmer. He's got his own company. He built a AR plant um, company where you can just take a photo and it's live and you just drag a plant and it's a virtual plant. You can walk around it and sitting there on the table or in a corner of your office and looks real. I'm like, wow, it looks like it's really there. You're just holding up your tablet, your phone, and you can just tap it and just switch the plant, the flower, 
I'm like, that's pretty cool. You could really see the plant, how it look in your office. And this is something he custom built with his AI technology, um, you know, and for his plant company. I was like, that's pretty amazing. Now you can really see how things would look in your, uh, in your office. Um, that's a very remember, interesting tool. Um, on... Go ahead, Christina. Uh, no, oh, no, I was, I was just, just saying gonna... that I remember at Disney, they used to, well, they do still, Imagine they had a whole team that was uh, for production. Uh, basically, they took all the models, they took the right uh, timing and uh, as the thing, add the music at the right spot. And uh, they would walk through the ride, virtual ride, basically. Uh, and it was just not the, but it was sound as well, timed, uh, anything that was running in that timed. Uh, if there were like jerks or something, they would do that in that, uh, you know, so they use a bunch of tools to kind of bring it all together, mostly Maya, Houdini and stuff. But the other parts were like, it, they would have physical boards connected to it as well. So if you press that button, what would happen while you are doing the ride and things. So they, it, they like bring in not just like, okay, I have a, goggle or something but it's more so they immerse you uh, because the product they are very 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 detailed about what the user experience is and that's how mm. they did it mm. what were we going to say christina oh um talking about that tool that your your neighbor is working on uh there is a rumor that ikea the furniture making company yep. they are, are they have been working on a tool don't hold me to this but i, I i'm pretty confident that the yeah. rumor is true they're working on a tool where you can actually hold up your tablet to your room and drag and drop the furniture and yeah. see what it would look like in their room i know they had something rudimentary maybe it was somebody else gosh too many technologies 2d in my head version up. i've seen a 2d version where you can just drop the furniture they have that yeah i yeah. used it to help design my kitchen and realize <laughs> that i need more money <laughs> yeah. um, um it's and, already uh, available by the way christina on the app is store. it oh okay all right yeah, so there you I'll go put it's, it on uh, the chat man, thank you yeah that I mean, this one was cool. um yeah so just it's very cool where the technology is coming from i can't wait to see kind of how it gets implemented more but uh but newman you were discussing the, the like a ride where you would sit on i remember that as a kid from being in canada we have a place called canada's wonderland it's like our Disney world, but really small compared and yeah. that was the best ride you just go and sit in a chair with a little vr thing and they're jerking you around and smells and you get smoke in your face but it was just so interesting you know even mm -hmm. you know i'm not yeah how many water too many. And, uh, if you go to universal studios that's yeah. all it is all of them yes. are like that they cover you into a dome <laughs> And it just does the whole, you know, and then they will shoot water or air, things like that to kind of make yeah. it like a, a full immersed experience. That, what they call yeah. it, the 4D or 5D, because they're blowing air on you. They're blowing mist on you. They're yep. shaking the exactly. chair. <laughs> I have know? another one that's in like an alien thing. So you yeah. have everything, but then you get to shoot aliens. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, sign me up for that ride every day. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to end it here. Um, for all our, uh, since we recorded this, um, if people want to follow you on social media or LinkedIn, um, you know, Matt, if you want to start first, you know, if somebody wants to follow you or contact you, you know, where would they go? You know? um, I'm not good at social media at okay. all, uh, but I am on LinkedIn. Yeah, um, LinkedIn name yeah. just like it's spelled. Okay. Christina? Same. Uh, I am working on the MeWe that you have introduced me to and Donya, but uh mainly LinkedIn and my name, Christina Youngblood. You can find me there. Uh, and Rena? Um, LinkedIn. LinkedIn is my primary yeah. mode of uh, social content. Okay. And Newman? Yeah. Likewise, basically yeah, LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Yep. yep. So you can, um, for myself, you can follow me on LinkedIn. You can also follow me on MeWe. Uh, I do have accounts on Instagram and on Twitter and uh I don't think I'm on any of the other platforms, you know, I'm definitely not on TikTok because I'm not dancing. So, <laughs> so <laughs> but uh, thanks for coming online guys and sharing y'all's insight on Revit and other third-party applications and stuff. I try to do this every three months with the Revit guys. Then I, then I jump back to the civil and AutoCAD guys. I'm going to try to get involved with the fusion and inventor guys eventually, you know, I want to tap into all the industries where I use the groups. 
Um, but, uh, and if you haven't joined our user group, come join. You know, Rena's on there all the time. And now we got Christina posting blogs also. We're all actually online every day, just sharing ideas and tips and tricks. And we do have members that post questions all the time in our user group chat, group chat. And we also have our forum section. So I go in there and post updates about all of this updates, news, webinars, tips and tricks. And you know, I think we have like 50 videos now uploaded on our uh, user group platform. Um, so, and then I don't know how many posts we have. We're getting closer to probably 250 users, I think, maybe 230. Ooh, wow. Um, so we're, we're still growing. So, uh, I enjoy it because it's kind of, kind of that Google, um, community. If you remember Google community, you can do videos and do blog posting and group chat and video chat and stuff like that. So that's why I like me, we, it, it's really great. Um, so, um, and it's not oversaturated with garbage things. yet. Yeah, and there's no ads. That's the beauty about it. There is no ads anywhere in the MeWe platform. So you don't get any pop-ups and stuff like that. Or So I keep the user group very clean. So I make I kind of vent everybody, um, make sure that they're not going to be a bot coming in posting all kinds of junk and stuff. So uh, uh, I always look and see. Damn it. I almost got there's that. like 100 people still on the list for me to join. So I go uh, do like a background. Are they on LinkedIn to see if it's a real person? Are there any kind of social media to see if it's a real person in our industry? <laughs> so uh, sometimes I have to double check, you know. You know. <laughs> so and sometimes a member will tell me, "Hey, you let somebody in, you know," and then I go look at it, and then I have to remove them. So because that really wasn't in our industry, you know, like anything like that. So, um, but uh, yeah, Matt, if you want to join our user group, I mean, we've been giving the prizes away. We had uh, we just gave another one a few weeks ago. We have a custom made gaming mouse we gave it away uh, to one of our trivia. Uh, so we have our trivia. A Revit one probably next month. Uh, another one, we got our Civil 3D tomorrow and InfoWorks tomorrow. Mm-hmm. We gave a gaming headset, a wireless gaming headset. We gave away um, a uh, Blue Yeti microphone. Um, yes. We also gave away like $500 in Christmas last year uh, in prizes. And then this year we're giving away a laptop. So that's wow. for the most active users and stuff. So you can convince me. So we kind of look, I look at <laughs> video blog posts and stuff like that. Um, you know, who's, who's posting the most, who's taking, you know, taking advantage of uh, the, the polls and stuff like that. So, um, you know, love, definitely love you to join. So um, is that, he's done uh, a very good group? job, Matt. What's that? Yeah. 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 Uh, is that user group on LinkedIn? Uh, no, it's not on LinkedIn. Oh, uh, me, we. You it's, said. Yeah, it's me, we, you join, it's free. Uh, here, I'll post the, the, the link here real quick. Um, and, and you don't have there. to wait for him to check the other hundred. Yeah. He'll get you. <laughs> uh, and yeah, we, we are, we're online every day. I mean, people, I have some members from overseas and they'll message me privately at two in the morning because they know I'm awake. So, <laughs> and uh, ask me questions and stuff. So let me, let me get you the, uh, the link real quick. Um, make me feel better when you're online really late at night. And we're <laughs> I'm just kind still of working. Yet, so, <laughs> and, you know, y'all saw my posting last night at, you know, late last night, the other night at two in the morning. Is anybody up still <laughs> yeah. working? So, um, all right, let me get that chat. Uh, okay, let me get you that link. And you can share this link to other people. And you know, I'll put it on the chat. And a heads what up, I have you? contacted right. the Burr Tool guy. We might, he's interested. Yeah, I mean, can, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the only thing I, I don't allow is uh, I don't allow like advertisement, recruitment. Yes. Nobody come come in and recruitment. Um, and then you know politics. If you want to go politics, do look what I can do. I just go to Twitter and rant. So <laughs> if you want to rant, so but yeah, I keep it pretty fine. We are a fun group. We, we talk about other things, not about Autodesk. You know, you know, majority of the time it's Autodesk products. But some people will share insight about using Autodesk and Bentley products. You know, t- together. Um, Esri products, um, Lumion, Trend Motions, third-party uh, th- uh, drone technology. So we've done a drone webinar. So uh, it's fun, you know. So uh, we do have a few Autodesk members on there that really just don't participate. They just kind of watch what I'm doing with a user group and stuff like that. So um, so uh, did it go through? Oops. Hold on. I didn't post it on the chat. Uh, let me put uh, the link here to... Everyone, post. Uh, what's going on here? Let's keep switching. Just confirmed my email, so I got my my account created here. Okay. Uh, here. Do, do, do. And why won't it? It's 
really weird the chat my uh, profile avatar by default is a piece of toast with sunglasses <laughs> mike has a taco i hesitated to change it no i'm keeping it there's <laughs> no question about it i'm keeping it there you go um so if you, now matt if you just click on that link it'll it'll it will ask me to uh let you into the, the group since it is a private it's not open to public uh, oh here it is you've just popped up okay approved and uh, I'll send you a link uh, of a YouTube video I've created how to use the MeWe platform because there's a section up top for chat. That's the group chat. And then the other one is for the forum where you can post a blog or a video. Um, so I'll send you an invite. But now you have full access uh, to um, the user group. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and then on the video, I'll show you how to remove yourself from the MeWe uh, group <laughs> so you might want to do that you'll, you. get, you'll get hit with all kinds of advertisements and political stuff and uh, so you'll want to remove yourself from me we form um you know so uh um but i do follow other user groups like i'm i'm a big comic book collector so i follow the marvel and dc group user nice. groups so uh and there's a photography user group on there so i follow a photography user group uh, like landscaping and stuff like that so pretty cool um but yeah, thanks for joining and, you know, share with the other teams and uh, on, on your team that wants to come in and just share insight, you know, and, um, you know, uh, you know, Christina joined what two um, last month or something. Yes. Yeah. I think Rena has been there for a couple of months. And so it's been, it's been a fun group we're, I'm trying to get more Revit people in there, you know, and invite more Revit people. I think we average probably two to three webinars a month. <laughs> so I do have uh, Autodesk next month, but we do invite Autodesk for our webinars, um, other experts, expert elites, industry experts, um, third party uh, industry experts to do webinars. So we do <laughs> webinars, live streaming. So sometimes I'll do live, uh, random live streaming you know, late at night or in the afternoon to say, hey, I'm going to go live. Let's talk about something. Um, and then we do trivia. Um, so uh, and they're fun, you know. Uh, I might show up to the civil one. You, Fail. You, yeah, you never know. You know, um, you know, Mark didn't think he would win, and he won by one question. You know, I guess I I've been a little that. too hard for AutoCAD because we only they only got two right answers. <laughs> so the ones I created, uh, but the Revit, right? You know, Rena helped me with uh, the the Revit one. You know, creating some questions and stuff. So that was fun doing Revit. You know, so uh, uh, I probably need to do a, like a Navis work and 3DX Max one. So I'll probably you know. I'm not an expert in 3DX Max. I, I dabble with it and play around with it and use it every now and then, but not a, definitely not an expert. So, uh, but yeah, yeah. Thanks for joining. And, you know, uh, I would definitely download the mobile app because people forget to come back to the browser. They won't save it. And then they'll totally forget. But if you download the mobile app, you'll get the notifications about a webinar and events and posting and stuff like that. So I think majority of uh, people are using the, the uh, mobile device app instead of the browser. Um, yeah, so. And you did also talk with experts. That was something I just learned that you yeah. had done. You did. And I think the last one was Rena's or you haven't released it yet, but. Yeah. Yeah. So I do the uh, expert elite world. So um, Rena's got her video on there. So I, I got my own YouTube channel okay. with the expert elite world. Um, Danya's is next. I'm going to release hers. We already recorded hers. I got three other people I've recorded. <laughs> so, um, and so uh, um and, and Christina, have you are become an expert yet? Uh, are you? I'm not not through Autodesk. Uh, okay. My friends are helping me because yeah. you can you can go and apply or you can nominate. Yeah. So yeah, my nominate, friends yeah. told me to stay on the nomination yeah. side because yeah. yeah. So yeah, and then we'll, we'll get you in there doing videos because I I interview all these different experts. You know, I did one from UK, Turkey. You know, mm -hmm. um, so just sharing their insight about their journey being an expert lead and uh, and in the products and stuff like that. So that's on the YouTube channel. So. On the YouTube channel, you'll be able to see this recorded video, the um, uh, user group uh, videos, the expert leap videos, and also my custom apps for my company. So on there, uh, so civilcadls.com. So, um, but all right, guys, I don't want to hold you any longer. Thanks, uh, thanks for coming in there, and uh, I'll be sending you a little, little, little uh, uh, gift for participating. Uh, so be checking your email. So uh, I, I do give out little gifts all the time. So for participants and stuff like that. So y'all are giving up y'all's free time to go uh, participate in these user groups and stuff. And I appreciate that. So um, so you know, be checking your email uh, and I'll send you a little gift. So too kind. Tony. All right, guys. Thanks. Tony. Have a wonderful day. Have a nice to meet you guys. Have a good one. See you later. later.